So you want to know what the main difference is between these two brands based off of these two numbers right here. It's actually simpler than you think. These are two of my brands under management as far as one of our portfolios. To break this down, right, we have one brand that's doing well over six figures a month in just total revenue. And then on the other end of the spectrum, we have a brand barely crossing six figures a month in, in just total revenue. We are running the same exact strategy across both companies. We're trying to grow the top of funnel base. But what separates brand A from brand B is simply put, the amount of frequency and people buying back into their business. Now, I could say the main difference is one has a, a huge cult like following of a million followers on Instagram, whereas the other one is your traditional, right, uh, boutique brand that's that's in the early phase of a startup. There is no right or wrong answer. I can tell you that when you have an audience, when you have a following that huge of over a million plus, when you run ads, your CPM is going to be cheaper because we're spending north of two, three thousand dollars a day in spin, and we're seeing eight dollar, ten dollar CPMs, even five dollar CPMs at times. Whereas on the other side of the spectrum, right, it took us a, a, a decent amount of time to reach that ten to fifteen dollar CPM threshold, right, and we're optimizing for that, which is, is really good. Yes, we're pushing high AV bundles across both. Yes, we're doing, we're going fully broad. Yes, we're doing a lot of creative testing, right? These are the same creative systems across both companies. But the main key factor between the two is one has an audience with a huge following demographic. The other one is they're, they're not releasing a ton of collections, right? So going into the new year, if I were to lay out a roadmap that taking the results from this company that's crushing it versus the other company that's more on the, the smaller side, it's building a community. And this can be done literally just with Facebook. You don't need to drive traffic elsewhere, create your own app. Literally just having a Facebook group with just a community of all your audiences is running, already running Facebook ads. It's not much or it's not more difficult for a, a follower of yours or your audience to just join a Facebook group, right? It, it's on the same platform. Sure, you can build into an app. Sure, there's software to allow you to do that, but you need an audience first to, to get there, right? When you have that Facebook group of just funneling a ton of people into your audience, you're going to get social proof. You're going to get testimonials. You're going to get reviews. And then as a byproduct, right, you have that audience to where now you can implement your own software using TapCar or some of this other software tech to incentivize your audience. But the main focus is you need to build an audience. Organic content has an effect on paid ads, right? The more organic content you're posting, well, then the effectiveness on that based off CPMs is going to be uh, lower, right? You're going to have cheaper CPMs, the cost per impression. If I were to summarize this, and if I were to just lay the roadmap, it's building an audience. So that's the main key factor. Because once you have an audience, let's say you funneled in a ton of new customers, right? With your paid ads funnel, right? Because I use these channels coherently. I use Facebook for top of funnel traffic. I'm trying to get a ton of people into the ecosystem. And then from there as a byproduct, how can you increase your LTV? Well, increasing LTV isn't just cross sales, up sales, and down sales. I mean, those play a percentage of raising the overall AOV and just getting people to extend their frequency of buying behavior. But I would say that stuff outside of the account and stuff outside of your just generic offers you're pushing, that has more of an effect for your business than overall just forcing people to raise the OV or forcing them to cross out upsell or downsell, right? The biggest lever of raising overall LTV, no matter the email retention strategy, no matter how many SMS texts you're sending, it's having collections of consistent drops having collections of new products releasing quarter after quarter, month over month, depending how frequent you can go, right? Because I've seen it in the apparel space where you have a, a winning pant or a winning shirt, right? And then you just create variations of that and you just drop that on a collection basis. And you're getting those same exact customers that would have bought from this shirt. You're giving them to now, you're giving them a reason to buy back from your business because you're releasing new products. There's been an idea or ideology of how you should go about this, right? Some brands are more, they have limited supply and they're just gonna drop a collection at a certain time period. If the customer doesn't, if misses out on the collection, well then that builds out exclusivity for the brand. We see that for streetwear brands like Apparel, for uh, Supreme, Bape, all of these uh, like New York fashion brands. And then you can go up scale up the ladder of like Louis Vuitton, how often are they releasing collections, so on and so forth, but they have their audience, they have their demographic, vice versa. For DDC e-commerce, where our average product retail price is around 30 to $50, what we're doing is we're trying to raise the AOV, of course, on the front end from paid ads, but as a byproduct, if you can create consistent collections, 
quarter after quarter or even month over month. That's gonna do more for your business than pushing a ton of email retention strategies or different SMS variations. I'm not saying that doesn't affect performance, but I'm saying scope outside of your generic Facebook ads and Google ads and, and email retention strategies, that's gonna do more for your business, which is innovative product design. When you have innovative products, when you're creating new products that fill the vertical, not only are you attracting brand new customers, but also you're filling the funnel, right? So let's say you have a product that's more, for this example sake, let's keep it in the apparel space. Okay, let's say you have a shirt that's been crushing it, right? Now you're going to seasonality, now it's a winter time, let's say you wanna upsell a jacket. Now you're pushing the jacket collection on the front end. Right, so people that come in from seasonality or let's say the, the winter times, they get the jacket. And then from there, now we're going into spring and, and the more of the warmer seasons. Now you can sell them with your t-shirt collection for summer or whatever the seasonality time you wanna drop. So you, we, we have an evergreen offer just to run year round to constantly get new customers through the door. And then from there, when we have a ton of new customer base, what happens is when we drop new collections quarter after quarter, or month over month, it does, depending on how free you wanna uh, push this, we're now getting them to buy back from the business, not only one or two times a year, but we're getting them to out on average buy back three, four times a year, right? So that single customer that let's say cost us $20 to acquire, but their average LTV in a given 12 month time frame is they're buying three to four times. So then their average value would be what, $200 for, for the business. So that return on investment just from getting customers to buy back, we're not wasting money on ad spend because the thing is we're getting people to buy back when new collection drops. Summary, right? Brand to brand. What each brand can implement going into 2024 in the new year, it's building an audience, building a cult-like following, getting your organic presence up, and then as a byproduct, constantly dropping new collections so that you're giving customers a new reason to buy back from your business. And the third sort of phase of this is you need to constantly innovate your product. Like if we look at just, I keep saying this example, but look at Apple. Apple was a hardware company. They were not only a tech company, but it was a hardware company. They sold hardware goods as far as like you have your laptop that's a, and then you have the desktop and then you have these other variables. Now you have the mouse, then you have the keypad, then you have the keyboard, then you have the AirPods. Like if you just look at Apple, they go up the vertical consistently. Look at Amazon as well. Amazon was a book selling commerce platform. Then they've transitioned into now they do warehouse fulfillment. And then from there, they're even doing shipping, so on and so forth. So like for every single brand, every single year, you need to innovate and go up the market. If you're selling apparel, can you go into hats or can you go into some sort of accessories that aid with the apparel? If you're in like more of this niche specific demographic of you're selling like a specific luxury good or, or something along the lines of, uh, I don't even know for his example, say so maybe it's like, I don't wanna say yoga pants, but let's say it's like a wallet or something, right? Can you go up the vertical? Can you, can you make a belt? Can you make, uh, for example, some socks or something that just goes and aids the whole entire vertical? So the brands that crush it have SKUs that just naturally fit the vertical, right? They're just solving for the next problem that their product answers. So and then from there, it's like, let's say you have a product that solves a specific pain point, but from your information of uh, reviews and just social proof from your existing customer base, you have other angles to tap into. So the solution to all of this is as a founder, the goal is to get out of day-to-day -day operations. It's ultimately to have the headspace to innovate your brand, innovate new products, come up with new ideas so that you can constantly maintain a uh, homeostasis with your brand and with your customers, right? There's an equilibrium there of you're getting a healthy amount of top of funnel new customers into your ecosystem with paid ads. And then as a byproduct, you have the audience there to maintain that relationship. And then when you drop new collections, you're giving that customer a reason to buy back from your business, right? So those actions and those chronological orders is what's gonna help you take your brand from, let's say it's bootstrap to now six figures a month to now seven figures a month, right? Or even seven figures a year, depending on what your objectives are and whatever your profit margins are. But with that being said, right? If you are tired of getting burned by ad agencies, you're tired of outsourcing your marketing or your content, right? Check out scalevelocity.io. You can read our exact protocol, the exact steps necessary so that you can build all of these systems in house without paying 10, 15, 20, Hey, retainers a month. So if you're interested, book a call down below and I'll walk you through the exact steps we're using brand to brand to brand to take them from five figures a month to six figures a month to even seven figures a month, especially with the results I just showed you. So with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video.